assalamu alaikum and welcome back so today uh, we are going to have our lecture number seven where we will discuss the remaining three signals or functions which are uh, signum function ram function and sync function and uh, some of the numerical problems on the topics we have covered so far So the first signal today we are going to discuss is the signum or sine function. It is defined both in discrete time case and continuous time case. It is represented by SGN. So in case of continuous time signal, you understand we write the parentheses and we write we have the independent variable t. Whereas in case of discrete time the uh, argument is written in the square brackets and it is n so you understand n signifies that it the signal will be discrete time signal whereas in case of a continuous time we have t right so t has continuous value so this is how we represent it the signal uh, signum function in continuous time as defined here is defined as a function having value equal to minus 1 for the argument less than 0 so you understand less than 0 means negative so for any value of the negative uh, uh, t the output or the value of this signal will be minus 1 when the argument which is in continuous time case is t when it is equal to 0 in that case the value of the function will be equal to 0 whereas for the positive values of the t the value of this uh, function will be equal to 1 right so graphically it is shown here and you can easily grasp the idea that for negative values of the t it will be equal to minus 1 whether t is a minus 1 minus 0 0.5 minus 100 up to minus infinity for all these values the signal equals to minus 1 whereas for the positive case which is shown here so for the positive values of the argument it will be equal to 1 whether t is 1 t is equal to 100 t is equal to 200 or t equals to positive infinity right so uh, this graph shows the uh, continuous time version of the signum function whereas in the case of discrete time this signal is defined as a signal having value minus 1 when its argument is negative so you understand for negative value we we say n is less than 0 so n is less than 0 means that at n can have values integer negative values right it cannot have 0 0.5 and n cannot be 0 0.5 because you understand n is an integer so less than 0 means minus 1 minus 2 minus 100 minus 200 minus infinity right so for all the values where the uh, independent variable is less than 0 the value of the sine function will be equal to minus 1 whereas in case of uh, argument equals to 0 right for the 0 case this signal will have value equals to 0 and for the argument values greater than 0 it its value will be 1 so you understand greater than 0 means it can have integer values that means uh, for 1 2 3 10 100 right so for all those values the value of this uh, for all those values of the independent variable the value of the signal will be equal to 1 right so for the case of the discrete time signal the uh, sine function uh, sine function is shown in the here that is uh, bottom row of the right side figure okay so here we see that this signal equals to 0 because the 
n here which is independent variable is 0 so you see here it is 1 because the independent variable minus 1 because the independent variable is negative right so for all the negative values of the independent variable the signal has value equals to minus 1 similarly for the positive case shown here so all the values where n is positive this signal equals to uh, 1 so I hope it's quite straightforward you just say okay uh, signum function is a function whose value equals to 1 when its argument is greater than 0 uh, or you can say positive and its value equals to 0 when its argument equals to 0 and its value equals to minus 1 when its argument is negative so I think that's all for this signal I hope this gives you idea let's go to the next function and the next function is ram function right so ram function uh, we have ram function in continuous time systems and we have ram function in discrete time uh, system or right so in continuous time case the ram signal is defined as it is represented by r of t right and this function equals to t when t is uh, equal to or greater than 0 so that means this function will have values 0 or greater than 0 it cannot have negative value right so for the case when the argument which is uh, t if t is less than 0 this signal is 0 so that means this signal is 0 if I if you look at the figure on the right side I just uh, you, saw, uh, you see I am highlighting the value 0 with the red uh, highlighter right so that means for all those values whether t is 0 or t is minus 100 this signal will be 0 whereas for the case of the, uh, when its argument is greater than uh, 0 it is equal to its argument so that means when t is 0 it is 0 right like it is shown here when t is 1 it is 1 when t is 2 it is 2 when 3 is t is 3 when t is 100 its value is 100 so you understand it's a growing function similarly for the case of the uh, continuous uh, discrete time right so in discrete time we have uh, 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 ram function which is uh, represented by r of n and it is equal to n when n is right it is equal to n when n is equal to or greater than 0 and it is 0 when n is less than 0 so that means when n is either 0 or n is less than 0 that means less than 0 means negative value so you see all these values here I, I hope you understand if you look at so it's very clear that these values are basically 0 right so this is 0 this is 0 this is 0 so whether n is minus 100 or n is minus infinity or n is minus 1 right so for all these values this signal is 0 whereas for the case of positive value when n equals to 1 this signal equals to 1 when n is 2 this signal equals to 2 when n is 3 this signal equals to 3 and so on so you understand that it is a growing signal Right. Uh, another thing you might have noticed that is this notation. So you see, we can represent the uh, ram function in terms of step function. So if we represent the ram function in terms of uh, step function, so it is clear to you that it makes the representation very very compact. Right. So instead of writing these two lines, that is, we say r of t equals to t when t is equal to or greater than zero and uh, r of t equals to uh, 0 when t is less than 0 right so we have to mention write two lines here so instead of writing two lines if we just say t uh, r of t equals to t u of t so you see it makes the uh, representation very very simple in just one line it means the same what we what we have mentioned here in two lines right 
so similar arguments apply to this so understand that uh, how useful is the step function another function is sync function right in continuous time sync function is defined as sync omega naught t and it is uh, it is represented as sync omega naught t and it is defined as this one that we have it's uh, it's equal to sine pi right sine pi omega naught t divided by pi omega naught t right similarly for the discrete time case it has you can see just there is the difference of the uh, independent variable which is n here instead of t which was here and also just because we represent the discrete time frequencies by the capital omega so it's uh, identical right so again uh, this signal it is an even function of the time so this is shown here okay so uh, this is for the continuous case so if you look at this one this is the zero if you move from zero to work to this negative side or if you move from zero towards the positive side you can observe that it is symmetric right so because it's symmetric so that means uh, it uh, it is symmetric about the vertical axis so that means it is an even function right so another important thing is when it will cross the zero you see this is the uh, this is the zero crossing point or again this is the zero crossing point so the important thing is how can you find the zero crossing point so you can find the uh, uh, zero crossing point by because uh, when the numerator equals to zero right so this signal will have zero value so if you find the numerator equals to zero in that case we can easily uh, find the uh, points where it will have zero crossing so if we replace this by zero sine pi omega naught t equals to zero so that means because uh, this is a sine function right this is sine pi omega naught so you understand sine pi omega naught t will be equal to 0 when uh, uh, that is this thing right uh, the argument the the argument of the sign should be uh, pi r integer multiple of pi right so hence we can say that this will result into integer multiple of pi when pi omega naught t equals to m into pi are cancelling the pi with the pi we find that we have the zero crossing right only when omega naught into t equals to m and where m is an integer so all those points where the product of the omega naught and t results into integer value right so when it will result into integer value it will result into integer value when uh, t is right when t is the integer multiple of omega naught that means uh, reciprocal right so that means when t equals to omega naught in that case you see omega naught cancels with t so you get uh, uh, m equals to 1 so what are those values the when omega naught are in uh, we can say just uh, when uh, uh, t equals to uh, 1 by omega naught right or when t equals to 2 by omega naught or when right this is with plus minus okay so that's when t equals to plus minus 1 by omega naught 
or when t equals to plus minus uh, 2 by omega naught and so on so when this is the case then we say uh, then we get the uh, this equation which is m right equals to omega naught into t will result into integer values right so for all those values of t where uh, omega naught into t results into integer value right so that means uh, plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on so for those values the sing function will touch the zero or it will have zero crossings so similar argument applies to the discrete time case right so for those values where a product of the frequency and time will result into integer then we say those are the zero crossing points so those can be when t equals to 1 by omega naught or when t equals to 2 by omega naught right plus minus plus minus 1 by omega plus minus 1 by omega naught plus minus 2 by omega naught plus minus 3 by omega naught and so on so for such values uh, the product of omega naught and t will result into integer right and those are the values or those are the points right because this is a uh, time domain signal so for all those values of t this signal will result like you see at this point again we have zero crossing at this point again zero crossing so these are the points where the product of omega naught with time results into integer values or for the negative case this is some minus value of t and here uh, the value of the t is basically minus 2 by omega naught if i come here it will be minus 3 by omega naught and so on so in such points uh, uh, we have integer multiple of the uh, this product right omega naught into t will result into integer multiple and those are the points where we will have the uh, zero crossing right again another important point is that the the definitions that are given here right for both discrete time and continuous time they are uh, right they they are uh, normalized right because we are using the pi here right you understand right so if we don't uh, use the pi in the definition then we say it's an unnormalized version of the sing function right so if you remove the pi then we just have for example for the continuous time case i can just write omega uh, sync uh, sync s i n c sync omega naught right t equals to sine of right sine of uh, omega naught t divided by uh, omega naught t so this is the case of the sync function which is not normalized or it's the unnormalized version of the sync function so uh, that's all for the elementary signals and uh, let's have some numerical uh, problems and let's try to uh, solve some of them i'll solve some of them for you and i will leave as a homework for you to do the others so up to now we have done the classification first main topic was the classification of the signal in the classification we have talked about the following five classes as i have mentioned here again for your uh, memory recall so we have a first one we talked was the continuous time signal versus the discrete time signal second one was the 
E1 and odd signals, the periodic and aperiodic signals, deterministic and random signals, and energy and the power signal, right? So we'll have some numerical problems on uh, E1 and odd, right? And uh, periodic and aperiodic signal and energy and power signal. So I think I have done some of the numericals for you using uh, because uh, for the this case that is for the even case right even and odd case so I'll just write here uh, two problems here and I will not solve them and uh, that's your homework right so you understand the equation for the uh, finding the even and odd so the to find the even part of the signal it is x of et and this is equal to 1 by 2 x of t plus x of minus t so what does it mean it means to find the even part uh, we should have uh, the x of t and the uh, x of minus t right so you already have x of t how to find x of minus t so for example this signal this is x of t so how to find the minus x of t so that's quite straightforward you take the uh, mirror image of this one right so this part will be reflected this side right and for to keep the mirror here and if you look at, look at from this side so you will see that you find the mirror of this part that is from minus 2 to 0 will be reflected this side now that's quite simple to find the e1 you just add the x of t with the reflected version of x of t and scale it by a factor of 1 by 2 so you get the uh, even part and similarly for the uh, odd part I hope you understand this equation so I'll not go into the detail of this one so that's about how to find the even and uh, odd parts right so because they are given graphically so that's quite straightforward you plot the two and then just sum them and just scale it by a factor of two and you get the required signal right so if it was defined mathematically then you just put in the equation the right so for example we have some function x just to explain x of t uh, so for example we have x of t equals to uh, for example sine of t so you understand uh, how to find so you can just find x of minus t by replacing t with uh, minus t so if you replace minus t here so sine of minus t equals to you understand minus sine of t right so because you understand sine is an example of the odd function right so how you define the odd function you said uh, for the case of the odd function they will be anti-symmetric about the vertical so if you look at the sine function so sine function is basically anti-symmetric right so for positive value from 0 it is 0 for positive value it is you see it has positive value for negative value it has negative value so that means it's an anti-symmetric so it's an odd function right so if you find the even part of this signal it will result into zero because it's an odd purely odd function or odd signal right and the uh, for odd part you get the same so uh, i hope this gives you idea right because i said we will not we will discuss numerical problems only on these three uh, classification of signal that are even odd uh, periodic aperiodic uh, and energy and power signal you understand there no need to do uh, this one because you understand for the continuous time case the independent variable is continuous and for the discrete time case the independent variable will be discrete so i hope this gives you idea right it's just about the uh, uh, classification based on the independent variable where, where independent variable whether independent variable is continuous or it is discrete so if it's so i hope you understand this is a continuous one for the discrete you just have something like this maybe uh, this thing right or maybe something like this some might like this so you understand uh, this is uh, n and this is based on the fact that because the n has integer value so that means you understand n has value of one and has two and has three but it cannot have something like this 2.5 or 1.5 or something like that right so no need to do any numericals on them rather they are 
quite straightforward so uh, right similarly for the random and deterministic case we will not discuss uh, numerical problems on them because you understand then uh, the deterministic all the these signals you are studying here they are deterministic for the case of random signal you use the probability type thing that gives you the chance or probability that some signal will have value this or that and i think you have done some course on them but anyway we are not dealing a uh, uh, we will not discuss random signals here right so i hope that's all for the uh, first case that is uh, even and odd so right you understand you represent the signal mathematically like you did there in this case to find the odd and even you just replace t with minus t and then you find the x of minus t and then you know the, using uh, this equation right this equation you can find the even and odd parts for the case when you are you are the signals are uh, shown uh, graphically so in that case that's quite straightforward you you have this signal x of t so you can find x of minus t by uh, taking uh, the reflection of this signal and then using this equation it says that to find the even part you just add the two and scale it by a factor of one by two similarly to find the odd signal again you need to find uh, you need to find the reflected version of that signal so you subtract the reflected version from the original signal and scale it by a factor of 2 and you get the odd part so the next uh, topic is uh, about because i told you already that we'll be doing some numerical problems on e1 and odd uh, and periodic and a periodic signal and energy and power signal so this is the second class which we are going to discuss so i hope you understand that uh, that's the question number one part a so you have decided uh, you have def defined the uh, periodic signal as x of t uh, equals to Right, so this is the continuous case. So for a signal to be periodic, uh, we have X of T plus capital T, where capital T denotes the period of the signal, and uh, we say for, right, for all T, right. So for all T means for all values of T, that is t minus infinity up to infinity so if you look at this first signal because this signal is defined from for the values of t, uh, t equal to or greater than zero so that means this is an example of a periodic signal because it does not exist for all values of t because this signal is you see this one multiply by u of t so what u of t signifies u of t signifies that this signal exists from zero up to uh, infinity so because it does not this signal does not exist from minus infinity up to infinity so that means uh, we cannot say that this signal is periodic so this is an example of a periodic signal okay uh, i uh, just i would say you do this signal uh, this part by yourself similarly to find this part i would like you to plot this signal right once you plot the signal then you can check whether the signal is repeating or it's not repeating so that's quite straightforward thing that you say x of 3 uh, n equals to summation k running from minus infinity up to infinity and these are the impulses so you understand that impulse has output equal to 1 when its argument is 0 so uh, we can say that basically you can split this signal into two parts you can say okay one part is where you have the um, you say okay uh, x3 of n we can write as okay rewrite here x3 of n and uh, this is equal to right so you split it summation and running uh, k running from minus infinity up to infinity uh, right and you say this is your uh, this is a uh, impulse of n minus 4k okay and then you write the 
next part and you say uh, minus uh, minus and again you uh, I don't know how to copy paste right <laughs> redo again so again this is minus and then you say k running from minus infinity up to infinity and this is impulse of n minus 1 and minus 4 k right so you just write few values of the n and you plot uh, I, I would uh, like you to plot these two signal separately right so you this one okay so uh, you take few values of n and plot uh, this part first okay and then you take some values of n and then you plot this part right so you understand uh, because this is the uh, impulse right so when n equals to 0 right because we have k running from minus infinity up to infinity so that means at 0 x of 0 what value it will have n is 0 because x of 0 means you are replacing n with 0 so at 0 this is 0 and because k has values from minus infinity up to infinity and there will be one value of k which is 0 so at that point the argument of this uh, uh, signal will be uh, 0 so when the argument of impulse is 0 it will be 1 so that means if I just write few values here so that means this is for example at 0 so it has value of right this is n okay this is n and at 0 it has value of 1 this signal right I am talking about this one at 1 you understand when this is 1 because it's a multiple of 4 so this thing will never result into 1 because if it results into 1 then uh, 1 minus 1 0 and argument is 0 so impulse will have value of 1 right it right so similarly 2 so this term can never have 2 why because k equals to 0 it will be 0 k equals to 1 it will be 4 right k equals to 2 it will be 8 so again if n equals to 3 there's no value 3 here so that means argument cannot be 0 so that means when argument is not 0 impulse will be 0 so at 4 yes because when n equals to 4 that means because k has values minus infinity up to infinity so that also includes 1 so when k equals to 1 4 into 1 4 n is 4 4 minus 4 0 argument is 0 so it will be 1 so that means at 1 it uh, will be 0 at 2 it will be 0 at 3 it will be 0 at 4 it will be 1 similarly at minus 1 it will be 0 at minus 2 it will be 0 at minus 3 it will be 0 at minus 4 it will be 1 why because when uh, this is n is minus 4 so we have minus 4 here right we have minus 4 here because k has values from minus infinity up to infinity so when k is minus k is minus 1 minus 1 multiplied by 4 is uh, minus 4 and already have 4 here so that means it will be minus and this minus becomes plus so you have minus 4 plus 4 so it will result into 0 and because the argument is now 0 so impulse will be 1 so you understand if you plot it it will be something a periodic function with a period of 4 right I am talking about the first part then for the second part if you just use your common sense you can say basically the relationship between the first part and second part is this because here we have n and here we have n minus 1 so that means n minus 1 is shifted impulse right so when it's shifted and how many units one unit shifted so uh, that means if it is one unit shifted which direction because this uh, this is positive one right you understand if you recall so the shift was represented by n uh, n minus n naught 
right if you recall so we said that uh, uh, like we write okay y of n equals to x of n minus oh uh, sorry this y of n equals to x of n minus n naught so when n naught is positive that means shift left we also call it delaying the signal and when n is negative that means it is shift right or advancing right so in this case we see that it is uh, one unit shift left so that means if the or if this uh, this signal is like this okay this is your uh, zero right this is the zero so again if i say okay this is n so at zero so because if i compare this with this this is one unit shifted so straight away i say it was i can write that because it was it was one at zero so because it's one unit shifter so that means this will be one at one right for all this zero 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 this was one at four so because one unit shifter so that means this signal will be one at n equals to five similarly zero zero though this signal is one when n equals to minus four because this one is shifted one unit so where it will be one so it will be one because one unit shifted this side here yeah? you understand when this is one unit shifted this side so that means it was one at minus four so this signal will be one at minus three right so i hope then what uh, then, then you subtract the this signal from this one and once you subtract you can plot the subtracted version and then you can look at this is it repeating so if it is repeating what is the period of the signal so i hope uh, this gives you how you are going to do the periodic a periodic thing okay so i hope you understand how to check whether the uh, this signal uh, whether okay let me select okay so whether this signal is periodic or it's a non-periodic right so you just plot and then you just observe is it repeating its value if it is repeating what is the interval of repetition so that will be the so that will be the uh, period of the signal so uh, that you can do then we come to this part so if you look at this one so can you tell whether this signal is periodic or this is a periodic right so you understand this is an uh, exponential signal right so when this is an exponential signal uh, and because uh, uh, and its value is not increasing right and it's not exponentially growing or decaying so that means this is a uh, periodic signal right so when this is periodic signal what is the period of this signal so period can be found from the uh, frequency and you understand uh, this is the phase right 10 t is the phase so that means 10 t is uh, phase so that means frequency will be right omega naught will be uh, 10 okay because you understand the relationship between phase and the frequency is that if you take the time derivative of the phase it will result in two frequencies so 10 is the phase so that right and j is just a, a constant phase a constant phase shift because it's not changing with time right so that's your frequency so you can find the uh, you know the frequency so knowing the frequency you can find the period uh, and you can say it's a periodic with a period which is equal to uh, t equals to you understand 2 pi by frequency omega naught so in this case it is 10 so that means uh, it will be equal to uh, 2 pi by 10 so it results into point to 0 0.2 pi
So J is the uh, constant phase shift and this is your complex exponential. So using this we can find the uh, period and we also know because this is uh, neither exponentially growing nor exponentially decaying. So that means it's an uh, it's a periodic complex exponential signal. Right. Similarly, you can go for this one. So uh, you can easily check that because this is equal to e power uh, minus uh, one plus uh, j into t. So is it a complex exponential periodic signal? So let's see. Is it? So because you see t is multiplied, t is taking commons, taken common. So I can say that t is multiplied with this one and this one. So that means we have something like e power minus t and plus j t, right? Or I can write e power minus t and e power j t right so if you look at this one you can see this one is basically periodic complex exponential signal you understand that we do, we have done a lot of uh, discussion on this one and we know x of t is complex exponential signal when uh, complex exponential periodic signal when this is equal to c and e power generalized expression was j right omega naught t right so if you look at this one this is exactly equal to this one is if you compare that means c equals to one in this case and omega naught equals to also one so that means uh, this one is basically a, a complex exponential periodic signal so when this is complex exponential periodic signal but look at this term which is multiplied with this one. So if you look at this one, you can easily observe that it's, it is uh, exponentially decaying signal. So when this is multiplied with this signal, so the overall signal, which is product of this and, and this one is aperiodic. Why? Because it's exponentially decaying complex exponential signal exponentially decaying because e power minus t this one is complex exponential signal but this one is multiplied by this so that means it is exponentially decaying the complex exponential signal right and you understand uh, if we just have the okay let's have another example so i hope the rest of these you can do okay so for this signal you can also say this is again uh, so uh, this signal is again if you recall the discussion on discrete time complex exponential signal so you can say this signal is basically a uh, periodic complex exponential a discrete time complex exponential signal and this is the frequency of the signal right which is uh, so you understand that uh, if it is periodic so to find the periodicity for the discrete time uh, sinusoidal signal the condition is that it should be 2 pi right divided by uh, frequency frequency here is uh, yeah, or I should write like this. This is the generalized expression multiply by uh, m and it should be equal to some rational. If this is not equal to some rational number, then we say it's a aperiodic, right? So by putting values 2 by pi is 7 by pi, so it will result into uh, okay. I just simplified 2 pi 2 pi divided by 7 pi into m right so pi cancels with pi so you have uh, 2 by 7 into m so what is the value where we get the uh, 
right so if m equals to 7 right we get rational number which is 2 if m equals to uh, 14 then we get 4 and so on so you understand how to find that periodicity right also if you look at this one that means if I write it uh, this is the complex exponential uh, periodic sinusoidal signal right so if I write it using the earlier equation so you understand how can I express express it so in general uh, if this is the complex so we have two parts right it's real part and it's imaginary part right whether it's a discrete time complex periodic exponential signal or even it's not a periodic exponential signal but because this is complex so if something is complex then we have to plot that signal we have two graphs right one uh, for example this is now discrete time so one graph will be discrete time uh, n versus the real part of this signal and the other graph will be n versus the imaginary part of this signal right so in general you must understand that for the case of the complex signals we should have uh, uh, two plot or two graph one is the real versus the inter uh, independent variable versus the real and the second will be uh, independent variable versus the imaginary part Okay, so uh, quickly going through this, uh, going through this. So you understand this is cos square two pi t. So using the uh, equation that cos, uh, you remember right? Cos square alpha equals to what? That is equal to one pl plus cos two alpha, right? And divided by two. So this is square, you can write it in this form and when you write it in this form, you can easily find the frequency because uh, 2 pi, so now it will be, the square will result into 4 pi, so 4 pi is the frequency, so you can easily find about this signal, you can also go, right, if you, uh, I will not give you a hint, I hope you understand and you can tell which of these signals they are periodic again. Uh, if you look at this one, does it repeating or it's not repeating or this is square term and so on. So I want you to go through all of them. If you have any confusion or any question, you can ask otherwise, uh, right? Uh, you can ask and I think I have explained you in s sufficient details. But anyway, I would uh, ask you to go all to go uh, through all of them and just check all uh, right so if you have any confusion we can discuss because it will take a lot of time if i solve all of them and also it's not wise that i solve i want you to go through these right and then we discuss in the live session right similarly for uh, this case you understand because now it consists of two signals so check whether this signal is periodic right so you understand uh, for the continuous time case all the sinusoidal signals they are periodic so what is the period of this one what is the period of this one and you understand you write them in the co prime format that is t1 over uh, t2 and then you say this is equal to l over m and if this is equal to rational that means the resulting signal which is x of t it will be periodic and to find the period of uh, this signal x of t it will be equal to right either l multiplied by t2 or m multiplied by t1 right and you understand it should be in co prime uh, form like uh, for example uh, in general right i just write for example t1 or t2 so this is equal to for example uh, 15 and right this is equal to 12 so co prime means you just simplify them so there is a common factor of 3 so that means 4 and this will be 5 so that means uh, if I write L over K so L over K basically equals to 4 over Five. So what does it means? It means L is four and K is five. So 
to find the period right so what will the period that will be either multiplying 4 with t2 or 5 with t1 so i hope you can go for this and you can also go for the this second part which is this one right so using this you can find the periods so i think uh, that's all for this lecture and the next lecture we will talk about the uh, uh, numerical problems on the uh, power and energy signals and some other uh, signals so that's all for today uh, see you in the next class okay but i want you to go through all these uh, 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 numericals how i solved and you also uh, you should also think over each and every equation very very carefully so that you understand because it's quite straightforward we have only two variable in uh, this course one is your independent variable and one is your dependent variable so it's i think it's not very difficult to understand or perceive the idea behind each and every equation right so if you just write the uh, okay so i think that's all see you a lot of